Hi there, this is Lauren Duker with the Polite Pooch Academy. Just here to uh, shoot you a, a quick video. Um, if you're considering bringing a new puppy into your home um, and you'd like to know uh, what are some things that you need to consider. So basically, uh, there are seven things um, that I believe you should consider before you get a new puppy. Um, the first one, obviously, is the breed. So different breeds um, have different personalities and different requirements. So are you looking for a dog that's going to be bigger or a dog that's a smaller dog? Um, what kind of activities are you thinking about doing with this dog? Um, what kind of, um, you know, uh, temperament? So all of those things are obviously something that you should consider. Or if breed matters at all, are you just looking for a rescue dog that's a mixed breed? Um, the second one is the size, which kind of matches with the first, um, the first uh, requirement there because some dogs are going to be really big and some dogs are going to be smaller. There's the teacup sizes. Um, what people don't uh, remember is that there are different maintenance and health issues and behavioral issues that come with the size, you know, some smaller dogs, for example, are notoriously more difficult to potty train than the larger ones. Uh, some of the larger dogs can have uh, more health issues. So size is also definitely something you want to consider, you know, also how fast your puppy is going to grow if it is one of a, a larger breed. Um, the other thing that's very important is the activity level. So do you uh, want a more active dog? Do you want a lazier, less uh, active dog? Because people don't realize that an active dog, like they think of a German Shepherd, Australian Shepherd, a Border Collie, these dogs are all awesome. And I've, I own a Border Collie and I've trained several Australian Shepherds, but those are really active dogs. Like they need, daily exercise and daily obedience training and a lot of just basically you're you're going to spend the day entertaining that dog um so that's that's what i understand when people tell me that they want an active dog usually that's not what they really want they want a dog that will just hang out and play with them and play ball go to the park and then just chill on the couch or on, in the yard for the rest of the day that's not an active dog that's a medium to low energy dog so make sure that you understand exactly what you want in terms of activity levels and choose wisely. The next important part is grooming. So, and shedding I would add as well. So do you want a dog that's just wash and wear, um, short, uh, easy bath, you know, short, the short coat? Uh, how about shedding? Do you, uh, are you okay with a dog that sheds or would you like a dog that sheds less? Um, typically what happens is that the breeds that tend to shed less, like the poodles and those labradoodles and all the doodles, um, they have high grooming requirements nevertheless. Um, you still have to take them to the groomer for a cut every, every two or three weeks. So, you know, are you, how much are you willing to spend taking this dog to the groomer to get appropriate care um, as, as opposed to just being able to give a bath yourself um, and just, you know, be done with that. So definitely consider how much um, grooming this dog's going to need. The next thing that you're going to need, uh, need to consider is the dog's health and also lifespan. And my marker is trying to be funny. Lifespan. So I know that those are two factors, but they really go together because bigger dogs like the Bernese Mountain Dog, for example, they tend to have shorter lifespans. Um, that's also true with the Great Danes because they tend to have more health issues than a smaller dog. So it goes together with size. If you want a bigger dog, then you also can expect this dog to maybe have more health issues. Um, a lot of Bernese dogs are prone to cancer um, Great Danes, they can, are the, the bigger breeds, they can have a, a stomach torsions. So really do your research and ask your vet, you know, what, uh, how does the size of a dog affect, affect its lifespan? 
it's been my uh, experience that the bigger dogs they tend to live a little less than the shorter dog the, the smaller dogs um, the next thing that i wanted you to consider is a personality and trainability that also goes together with your breed choice um, as a trainer i have worked with a wide array of different breeds some dogs are very eager to work with you and to be trained and learn new things while others not so much and there's also the dogs that don't like being told what to do they think of themselves as, as more alpha um, and so they can be a little prone to more nasty behavior um, so for example your lab uh, or your uh, golden retriever all these dogs that are usually pet dogs they're usually very willing to be trained the australian shepherd the border collie whereas i've noticed of some huskies and some akitas that they're not so crazy about being told what to do um, so it really affects their trainability you know I've, I've trained a lot of huskies because people can't usually uh, handle them um, on their own without professional help so consider do you want um, a more easily trained dog that likes to work or do you like the more dominant um, kind of personality so definitely the dog's personality will influence how easy it will be to be trained um, the seventh thing is that if you have kids or if you plan on having kids you want a dog that is good with you want a dog that is good with children there you go um, some breeds um, usually the herding breeds which is my experience um, they're not so crazy about uh, living with a toddler for example because movement sets them off you know they don't like things that move real fast and erratic and if you have a, a two-year-old like i do then you know that that's the way they go all day long <laughs> Um, so you want a dog that's really okay with children um, okay with them being crazy and running around and just just being toddlers and you know younger kids um, some dogs are really not okay with that so do your research wisely and for the ladies that are expecting um, if you're expecting your first child I would say this is not the time to get a puppy at all um, you know the first baby is always a lot of work and it's very tiring it's very time consuming while it's wonderful you probably won't have the time or energy to give attention to your new puppy so don't get a puppy right now just wait <laughs> just a side note um, the last thing that actually makes for eight but the last thing that I want you to think about is whether you should get your dog at a breeder or you should rescue do you want to buy your dog or do you want to rescue um, I have no problem I've bought um, my border collie from a breeder before um, because there are different things that come with that so you if you if it's important for you to know exactly where your dog came from exactly what uh, your dog was treated like as a puppy you know what his parents were like um, if you want uh, your dog to execute a certain purpose like I needed a working dog that would demonstrate commands and just be happy to do whatever I wanted um, then I just went to a breeder and decided to get my border collie there but if you just want you know a family dog you want a buddy it, it's and you're okay with accepting the fact that you might have to do some training um, because of a dog's uh, unknown background then the rescue is really the, the the best option because you can give a dog a home that you, and you know how many dogs um, end up sadly getting euthanized because they don't have a home or sometimes they get dumped at shelters for behavioral issues that are completely fixable um, so that's one of my personal missions is to get the word out there that those behaviors that dogs um, have that are getting causing them to lose their homes over um, you know just basic behavioral issues that could be trained um, that's that's not all right you know they really need to get a chance to be taught how to behave and that's what training does but so if you go with a rescue and you decide that that's the way to go keep in mind 
that uh, some professional training might be required. And it is your responsibility to be able to give that rescue dog a chance and really be a responsible owner and train. Um, but also if you go with a breeder, um, as a responsible owner, I would not um, recommend that you go to like a pet store to buy your dog. There are um, some pet stores that are very popular, but unfortunately they have a reputation for uh, selling not so healthy dogs that kind of cause you to have um, a long list of vet bills, um, but also behavioral problems. Uh, so don't get, don't get your dog at a pet store, do your research, go visit the parents, um, go visit your breeder and make sure that it is a good responsible breeder um, and it will just avoid you a lot of headache. So once you've gone over the big seven here and made your choice, go out there, do a lot of research and choose your puppy wisely and I wish you uh, the best in that journey. Um, please keep in touch and um, watch more of our videos. Uh, make sure to check out our blog and join us on Facebook at uh, Polite Pooch. And I'll see you next time. My name is Lauren Duker, I'm a dog trainer and this is the Polite Pooch Academy.